capital to invest, but uh, you're, you're going to be able to see us move over the next uh, few months uh, and over the next couple of years with some new economic initiatives working with the people of the Kootenays. I thought that three dams figured into this, the Keenly side as well, but that wasn't mentioned. Is the well, Keenly side... Uh, the, Glenn can uh, bring you up to date on that and Ann, but we're going to be uh, we're going to be having steady construction of, uh, of dams over the next 20 years to so be able to provide uh, steady uh, employment for the people of, uh, uh, of the Kootenays over the next 20 years. So it's, it's part of the, the two dams uh, uh, expanded capacity and building on top of the existing dams is just part of that longer term strategy and Glenn can fill you in about that. Will the province be taking part ownership of the dams after? No, we're buying the, uh, the water rights uh, and the construction, uh, the additional construction to add new capacity. That's what we're purchasing being purchased uh, through a new Crown Corporation. So the new uh, turbines that are being put in as a result of the 51.85 million that's uh, being spent, is that money going to, all the uh, turbines power that's going to be generated from that point on going to be going to the powers, uh, to the uh, province's coffers? Just to yeah. clarify technically, the 51 million dollars is to buy the right to generate power. To actually right. generate power requires several hundred million dollars more of investment. So what we've done is buy the rights from Cominco to extra power generation on those two dams. And that's, in Keeney Side's case, of course, we already own Keeney Side, so we already have the rights there. This gives us now the opportunity to pursue those, uh, those, two, dam those two generation projects over the coming couple of years. Side, wouldn't it make more sense to yeah. start right away since it's shelf ready? No, I think that's a very good point. And what we're looking at is a lower Columbia strategy where uh, now that we own uh, the rights to, as a result of this, the rights to Winita and Brilliant, then we, we still have a decision to make as to which projects proceed first over the course of the next few years in the Southern Columbia. And it, it may well be that... In a full provincial policy. Yeah, exactly. So Why I is there a need? Well that other, other projects will proceed first because they're, they're, they're in a better position. But we now have the option of proceeding with Juanita and Brilliant. Whereas before, it was really Cominco's, Cominco owned those assets and the rights to the water rights to those dams. Why is there a need for a new corporation, the Columbia Power Corporation, rather than BC Hydro, just deal with this? Essentially, the new crown is, is what might be called a, a crown of convenience. It's not going to have any employees or anything else. It's to hold the rights. And then when uh, BC Hydro, uh, uh, through the yeah. government and through the electricity plan and Ann Edwards, uh, all of us are working on this, the, uh, when a decision is made then to proceed with uh, Juanita and Brilliant construction, it will likely be BC Hydro or it could be anybody else, but we will then ask BC Hydro to purchase those rights from this, essentially a holding company. It's just yeah. a mechanism it's to a hold the assets. a temporary holding company yeah. to hold the assets and the rights right. until uh, the government can make the, the, the best decision for the people in the Kootenays and for the taxpayers of British Columbia. Right. Is BC Hydro going to pay taxes on these uh, new facilities <laughs> or on its existing facilities? That's, yeah. a, that's a bigger question, which is under active consideration because we know that's a big issue. Obviously, we have the return of the downstream benefits, and the Premier's already announced uh, so those discussions are ongoing, and we're, we are working, working that out, working with the community and the MLAs here uh, in, in the best way possible. And obviously, the taxing, uh, taxing uh, BC Hydro paying property taxes will be part of that equation. But you see, what we had to do is to stabilize the, uh, the Kootenays with this decision today to assure generations of, uh, of uh, people who live in trail and uh, in, in other communities who depend directly and indirectly on, uh, on the Kaminko operation that there's a future and it's a very good future. We can now, we can now uh, get on with some of, the other, uh, some of the other economic development opportunities that abound in the, uh, in the Kootenays. Is one of those other opportunities? I know that the city of Rawson is working towards getting BC21 funding for extension of services to the base area. How, does, is that one of the things that's being looked at? There's a number of other things. We're, we're going to be uh, investing over $2 billion in building new highways and bridges and super ferries and, and uh, sewer and water and road uh, systems with the municipalities. Uh, uh, we just signed on, as a matter of fact, with the federal government to... Uh, invest uh, over two-thirds of a billion dollars the next two years in upgrading our water in British Columbia with new sewer and, and water purification and uh, treatment plants and, and new road uh, construction, as well as the uh, existing programs we have of 50-50 uh, cost sharing uh, those systems with municipalities. And then we have BC21 and all the projects there, uh, including the community uh, grants that are available to build new community facilities. 
uh, such as you just mentioned, and Rosslyn and many others coming in from all over the province. My understanding is that $100 million worth of preferable, preferred shares are going to be purchased by the province of Cominco. Uh, what is the value at this point of no, those I shares? I think, Lauren, you can answer that uh, no, question. That's, that's no, not that's the case. not true. It's not true? No. You got no. a lot of long term construction here, huh? It's such a great deal for the province of British Columbia when the last time the province invested money, it lost it in this smelter that didn't smelt. Well, that's true, it didn't, and the technology was a bust. Uh, we have done due diligence on this technology, both uh, the work that uh, Kamenko did. Kamenko has a vested interest in it working this time. They lost a lot of money for their shareholders the last time. Uh, the province has uh, an interest uh, in, in doing due diligence this time, better than the last government did. On, on the, on the last technology, and we've done that. We've uh, we've seen some of the plants uh, in Italy where this uh, new technology is working, and in Russia, uh, we've had uh, independent advice from engineers and outside consultants about uh, the technology, and uh, we think that due diligence uh, is such that we're comfortable to sign on to this deal on behalf of the people of British Columbia. And it's listen to save uh, the jobs of 6,000 British Columbians and to make sure that the, uh, the, the families throughout the Kootenays now have stability for, for generations and can build on that. And believe me, there's lots of people coming for the quality of life in the Kootenays. They're coming from the Lower Mainland, coming from Kelowna. They're even coming from Alberta. The province is giving uh, Kaminko a 35% tax rebate as part of this deal. Is that not setting a bad precedent for other businesses in the province? No, we've uh, been reviewing uh, the uh, water rates and uh, other issues uh, to see that they're fair and I've said all along that my uh, the way that I operate uh, with businesses I want business to pay their fair share of taxes treat their employees fairly and don't mess up the environment and where taxes are seen to be unfair uh, as we pay down the deficit as we're doing very successfully in British Columbia it's down 35 percent from what I inherited uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be able to make uh, adjustments where taxes are overly burdensome and the minister Edwards and I have committed to uh, to work with the mining industry uh, to make sure that they can be more competitive. Sure that the slag doesn't continue to be flowing into the Columbia River. No, they're going to be able to now process uh, the uh, slag through the new smelter, and it's going to take care of what could have potentially been a up to a 200 million dollar uh, cost uh, and problem for Kaminko. They're now going to be able to process that slag and get rid of it through the uh, the new smelter. You want. Mr. Harcourt, you you uh, you said that you want businesses to, to carry their uh, their and uh, or the reverse. We're going to be able to get at uh, some of the other issues that are important, such as the downstream benefits, such as the Columbia Basin Authority, such as some other economic development ideas for uh, people in the Kootenays, such as the issue of BC Hydro and taxes. Do we have any guarantees that this is the last time Kaminko will come to the province for help? Well, it's not a question of Kaminko coming. It was the people of Trail. It was the mayor and council. It was the uh, workers. It was uh, it was a very strong message that was brought to myself and to uh, Ann Edwards, the minister responsible for mining, to Ed Conroy, the MLA, that we don't want to shut down the town and the last person out turn out the lights. We like it here. We want to stay. So we've been able to work out uh, quite a unique, creative, cooperative arrangement with everybody. That's a win-win-win. And we have guarantees on all. We have. Uh, we have as, uh, as good a guarantees as you can get in the real life, Absolutely. which is uh, there are some performance uh, uh, penalties uh, if this doesn't proceed. Uh, but listen, I think it's a, it's a tight, tough, well worked out uh, a set of agreements that we have. We still got another month worth of work to do on finalizing the details, but the reality is the people of Trail have a secure future, and now we can get at the many other economic development opportunities that there are in the Kootenays. Do we have any plans, or the province have any plans for that recreational land that we got back? Yes. What would they be? Well, you'll find out. Another surprise. <laughs> or surprises. Thank you very much, Mr. Orker. Okay.